Hi, welcome to Brain Doodles. I'm Kyle. And I'm Beetle, and we're about to piss off the internet by saying SAO is good. So let's start creating. We're going to preface this by saying that we haven't actually seen the new movie yet. Uh, Ordinal Scale, is that the name of it, Beats? Yes, it is. Yeah, we haven't actually seen the new movie yet, so this is purely based on the anime itself. We also haven't read the light novels. But the reason we want to do this is because in science, when you run an experiment, you record all the data that is created by that experiment, not simply the things that went wrong or evidence that proves your point. You're supposed to take in everything. And everyone on the internet has given a large amount of their time to discussing all the things that are wrong with SAO. As filmmakers and creators, we want to take the opposite side. We want to take a look at the things that are good in SAO and actually try and learn from that. Because clearly it's the number one anime for a reason, or it was the number one anime, I don't know if it dropped, but we gotta give it some credit for being as popular as it was, despite all of the issues people have repeatedly pointed out about it. Yeah, yeah, that being said, like, yeah, this isn't something we're, we're not trying to say it is, it, it's without its flaws. Um, it definitely has its problems from a, from a literary perspective. There are a lot of problems with the show. Um, you know, it's got bland characters and it's, um, you know, story could be a lot more cohesive and uh, a lot of things like that. Um, but honestly, a quick Google search, literally just Google search SAO or why SAO is bad or any of those kind of things. And you'll see, you know, some pretty good breakdowns of those uh, of the show and something that's uh, pretty good and very informative. Beetle and I both enjoy SAO. We actually liked watching it. We'll admit there are issues with it, but we enjoyed watching it. However, despite that, I still like going and watching through these videos and seeing how they're breaking down everything. I'm actually, as research for this, we had to look at some really briefly, and I found a couple new ones that I'm actually going to be taking a look at shortly after we're done recording this. <laughs> for sure. I think even in some of the the videos that you, you could watch that are already out, they at least admit the fact that it is a show where you can kind of project your own fantasies onto the characters because they are a little flat. And by a little, I mean a lot. Uh, <laughs> Putting it lightly, Kirito is kind of just a blank face with a generally positive first personality. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's, you know, he's seen some things and he has, you know, crazy skills, but he still is someone you could easily relate to because he is, has nothing that you can't relate to in a way. Thinking about it, there really is nothing super concrete about him that makes him unique. Like generally with a good character, you should be able to point out a lot of the quirks that they have. And I don't, he gets angry. I know, it's not it's not like a character like I'm trying to think of a good example of a character. What about um ReZero? Subaru, there we go. So because we're talking about anime, might as well use an anime character as a counterpoint. You can just if you watch a little bit about it or a little bit of it, you can start to pick out some of his quirks. He's generally overconfident, a bit of a coward. Uh he has a bit of an obsession with cute girls. And not in like the <laughs> oh he's uh, he's just a main character getting a harem, but more in like he's actually kind of perverted in a sense. Like you yep. can start to point out little quirks. Kirito doesn't have quite as many of those. He gets angry when people threaten his friends. He has bad memories, but like it's much easier to just insert yourself into that, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, which is it's definitely an interesting you know point to to see that sometimes less character could actually be good which is uh that just sounds so wrong <laughs> it, it is it does sound wrong and and usually you don't want that but i guess in it's the sense of the show it actually works for them true it's if a character is not offensive in any way if there's nothing to dislike about the character simply that other than the fact that they exist then the sh the story itself using that character is harder to dislike outright because there's nothing offensive. Offensive here meaning the reason why someone would dislike it. There's nothing offensive about it, I guess. I think I think that actually br brings up a, a small point for me too. Is like a lot of shows, I don't like the main character. Like you always like a side character better. Like, um... I guess the first thing that comes to mind is how I met your mother. Like, I don't know why, but uh, 
like Ted isn't a great character, but all the other supporting characters are a lot more interesting. In addition to the generally kind of flatness of Kirito's character, one of the things about the show is that it actually has a really good premise. The the whole trapped inside a death game. It's it is interesting. It's a virtual reality game, which is very apt at this point because we are making advances into virtual reality in the first place. So something that kind of builds off of that kind of that lingering fear idea, I guess, is a really interesting idea or a source, a seed. That is a terrible pun if you know anything about the SAO Sfin, uh, story. God. I'm going to use it. It's a good seed. Uh, that serves to start the story, and it hooks people in, because the entire first episode is just setting that up. But if you take a step back from the specifics of the story and look more at kind of the generalities of it, it's a child fantasy, almost. Your your main hero is trapped inside a fantasy world where he is literally the best at what he does. He is given a special skill because he is literally the fastest player out of the 10,000 players that are there which is a horrible game mechanic, but a really cool story point. <laughs> he, you know he's the hero as a result. So it's a, it's a gen- despite the fact that they're in a death game, would you agree with me, Bela, that they're generally, it's a generally happy show? For sure. I think, I think it is, you know, very, the, the premise of the show is very happy. Well, well, you know, dark things are happening on the outside and they talk about, you know, players dying all the time. Uh, notably, you see one die. Well, multiple of them die. Uh, his like first. <laughs> I was gonna say you see more than one. His first, uh, you know, uh, clan organization, whatever they're called, uh, party, I guess, uh, die in uh, third episode or something. When they all die, obviously, like that's a dark moment in the show. But like everything else is very upbeat. Something we mentioned in a, a different episode of Brain Doodles was how tone and how its contrast can be used. And this is kind of like a an example of that where it's there's two um, tones that are kind of trying to balance each other out where there's the outer tone where it's, oh, this is very bad. Um, they're in a bad situation. But all the interactions on the smaller scale are very uh, happy. It's, it's like a Sour Patch Kid. The outside is sour and the inside is sugary sweet. I can't keep a straight face, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so SAO has, you know, a lot of good core elements going for it. Like on the outside, yes, it, it does look like a bad show. But when you kind of boil it down, it has a lot of good, you know, components. Like, yes, there is virtual reality. There are, you know, cool sword fights. There's, you know, attractive characters. Like, there's a lot of good Sp- elements to it. Specifically um, cute girls, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> I look yes. like such a creep. <laughs> um, you know, something is, you know, the sum of its parts. And while SAO's parts don't congeal well, um, it's kind of like a, you know, shitty IKEA furniture. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It, it, it's, you know, the parts might be okay. It might be made out of okay material. It just does not go together very well. Um, you have all those leftover screws that you don't know what to do with, and some pieces are just unused, and you're not sure why, but it still kind of works, and you use it. So, and here's a, a very good example of, you know, how its parts are good, but, you know, it's... It's, it's execution, I guess. If you take a look at SAO Abridged, which is is inherently a parody of SAO, but it also takes the story and, you know, reworks it in a way that's kind of awesome, like amazing. I was uh, with only a couple tweaks, too. They don't change a whole lot. Like this really isn't I wouldn't I would hesitate to actually call this an actual abridged series because it is literally going episode by episode at this point. Yeah, honestly, and and most notably the what they did with Sachi uh it, in the real show uh they don't really bring her up that often like it's something that's clearly bothers his character on uh, you know subsurface level um Sachi is more of a recurring point of conflict for Kirito's character in SAO Abridged whereas in the original SAO it's not really stated enough and it doesn't actually seem to bother him enough to actually be considered a real emotional conflict 
Yeah, for sure. In short, go watch SAO because or SAO abridged because it's yeah. This is, we're not affiliated with the. I don't even remember who makes something witty entertainment or something like something that. Something witty, yeah. yes, something witty. We're, we have no affiliation with them. We just again really like that show, which is the parody of another show that we also like. Don't ask <laughs> questions. We're professionals. <laughs> we respect their creative talent. Uh, it's also hilarious. Anyway, continuing on. Um, character design. Yeah, on the topic of individual elements, there's there's a bit of back and forth, it seems, generally about character design. You get some people saying that there's cool designs and some people saying that the designs are rather ununique, I guess, or kind of one-sided, which is inherently true to an extent. I would readily admit that all of the characters have a single kind of unique, not even unique, a single characteristic to their designs. Kirito is black. Not in the skin way. I mean, like, just he wears black clothing. I cannot dig myself out of this hole. <laughs> uh, Asuna wears white. Uh, Liz is a blacksmith with pink hair and also generally wears pink. But she's also a character with a skirt. So there's that. Yeah. Battle skirt. Battle skirt. <laughs> Combat skirt. Yeah. <laughs> But the point being that all of these characters have kind of single characteristics to their design, which while not especially interesting inherently, they're not super unique designs, they're very recognizable. And there's nothing wrong with that, really. I guess that being said, like, less is more. Sometimes having too much detail um, can just cause problems and just make things unreadable. And yeah, honestly, they, they look good. Like, I think... In general, SAO just looks nice. Like even even like the colors and like the ambience of the of the show is just, you know, it's really pleasing to look at. Honestly, it's a visual media. I mean, the fact that it looks good is extremely positive because it's an anime. It needs to look good. If it looks bad, if it has bad animation, you're not gonna watch it, no matter how good its story is. For sure, SAO is definitely a good starter anime as well. Um, you know, it kind of introduces you to all like the tropes of anime. It it's just very pleasant and, you know, it has a good premise. It makes it easy for you to sort of pick up. And, you know, it's possible basically for, you know, even a longtime anime fan to enjoy. Which is one of actually, surprisingly, the more common complaints, at least that we've noticed, is that people seem to say it is, if you've watched enough anime, you will know at a spiritual level that SAO is inherently bad. And that just kind of sounds like a lot of bull to me. Like, you can't... Just because something is an anime does not mean that you can judge it based on how much of it you've watched. It's Anime is not a genre. It's not like action or horror or comedy. Anime is something... Uh, it's a larger class, more like feature films or documentaries or animated films. It belongs kind of in that category. Because... You can't treat them as if they are inherently similar to each other just because they use a common set of animation styles. It's like a good a good anything, a good show, a good game, a good movie, a good book are in going to be considered good. A bad one will be considered bad. Just because you've read better books doesn't mean that the book you're reading currently is bad. It just means it's not as good. Um, basically, what he's getting at is, you know, just judge something on its own merits rather than just saying oh this is you know an anime therefore it should be uh like another anime like a lot of people like to compare log horizon to sao which is a um, terrible idea and they're inherently very different yes they're both you know people trapped in a video game and it's an rpg and you know it's it's very similar but the biggest difference is is that um you know one's like a political drama log horizon and the other is like you know, a fighting, you know, somewhat romance. I guess Log Horizon has some romance too, but like, still, I would. They're I'd totally rather, totally yeah, I'd, different. I'd, you shouldn't compare those two. I'd rather compare. Correct me if you disagree, but I'd rather compare something like Sao to more like Fairy Tale, not not Log oh, Horizon. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think I think they're more along the lines of the similar shows. Like they, they have the similar tones, I suppose. So, kind of in conclusion, based on this, honestly, and now this is the more opinionated part, in our opinion, we would consider SAO to basically be a cotton candy show. 
meaning that it is, it's sugary, it's sweet, you enjoy it while you're eating it, and then the second you're done with it, you realize that there was really no substance to that at all. But it's still popular and everyone buys it because they enjoy that sugar rush. It's not... <laughs> It has its flaws. We're not saying it doesn't. We pointed out repeatedly where you can find a huge list of videos discussing its flaws. It's called YouTube and the search feature. And just typing <laughs> in the letters SAO. Yeah, we definitely agree it's not good uh, in, in a storytelling standpoint, but it does have its merits, and I, we don't think that should necessarily just be thrown by the wayside. You, gotta, you, you have to analyze the show in its entirety, as, as we started the video with. We're looking at it in its entirety. We're not just looking at the parts that went wrong. There are parts that go right, the parts that we enjoy, some of the stuff we talked about, and even just the core thought of, or the core, the core seed of the show <laughs> is pretty interesting. And as other people, like something Witty Entertainment have demonstrated, you can very easily tweak what is a acceptably decent show, what we'd call an okay show or a good show in the normal SAO, to a really amazing show in SAO Abridged. Again, not advertising for them, I swear. Yeah, so that's basically our thoughts on the show. We uh, would like to hear what you think. Hopefully you're not going to be too harsh on us for saying it's good, but... Bring on the hate comments. <laughs> Hopefully we can have a intelligent discussion about it, sort of, you know, bring up your points on why you think it's good in contrast to, you know, why other people think it's bad. So yeah, please continue the discussion in the comments below. And uh, this has been Brain Doodles and keep creating. Peace. Boop.